Okay, so we've got a young horse here that uh, was rescued last year. She was skin and bones when the current owner found her or got her. And uh, she developed some swelling here lately on both sides of, of her face. Uh, we've presented some of these cases. And so we're going to show you here what can sometimes look like a little wound. A lot of people confuse this for a wound or trauma. But let's take a look at what it looks like. We've got a, so here's the swelling right in this area right here. And then if we look, we can see that we have a little defect right here, a little scab. And if I take this metal probe and I put it into this scab, you can see how it goes in right here. It goes in pretty deep, okay, with a blunt probe. So then if we go, we're going to show you one on the other side where we have a similar situation. So we have a little bit of swelling, a little, another little scab. And then if I put this probe in here, we can see how that goes in at a different angle, okay? So this is classic presentation for infected, uh, infected teeth on younger horses. So anytime you see that little bit of discharge, that's a draining tract. Pus always takes a path of least resistance. Sometimes a path of least resistance, like in the previous video we just did, is through the mouth. Um, other times it will exit um, externally here. Sometimes it could go into the sinus or it could come out in the lower jaw. So this horse has two bad teeth. Now let's look at the x-rays. Sometimes the radiographs are not very rewarding on these types of cases because um, it, the roots may not show a lot of remodeling. So a lot of times what you can do is just put a probe in the tract and the probe will take you right to where the spot is. Remember, always shoot a radiograph with the open mouth if you're a veterinarian. And here's the other side and we can see how the probe goes right to this root. So we know without a shadow of a doubt that the right thing in order to help this horse out is we have to take out both teeth. She's really young so they're going to be long. Um, it's, it's a fairly uh, tricky procedure, but uh, we'll be able to help her out a lot. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with that. What we'll do is we'll show you guys what it looks like inside the mouth. Inside the mouth, typically these teeth look totally normal. Um, so that can be deceptive where you might think that, oh, there's not a problem here. Uh, but again, the problem is all at the root, not in the mouth at this time. Okay, so we're looking in the mouth here. This is her upper right side. You can see these teeth are all pretty normal. This is the upper left side. We have some infundibular caries. They're just grade one. So orally everything looks pretty good, but these teeth will just won't get better unless we do the extraction because we have such an abscess at the root. So sometimes what happens is the tooth is so rotten that it kind of breaks off in the middle and there's a variety of ways to get it out in a minimally invasive um, manner. Um, so what we can do at one is what's called a minimally invasive transbuckle approach with a screw or sometimes we can cut the teeth in pieces or we can do a com combination of that. So what we did here is we'll show you over on this side where we've made like a little little hole here inside the cheek so it's very small. And so that allows us to come directly in line with the tooth. Um, now you can look up at the screen and you're going to see I'm actually going to pass this screw up into the tooth right here. So we'll put the screw in here. And now through a little hole in the cheek right here, we're coming up into the tooth. We're going to put the screw in here, and after we've sufficiently loosened the tooth, we can go ahead and pull it out using the screw without causing damage to the sinuses. So here we can see the tooth is coming out. All right, so we've got the tooth out. You can see the reason why it broke during the extraction. It's really rotten. 
in the center. And so that's not uncommon um, that they can break sometimes. So whenever they break, it's very important to have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D. We have a lot of different techniques that we use to get teeth out. They're all pretty minimally invasive techniques with, with um, really low complication rates typically. There's some other methods that are still being taught in places that have high complication rates such as uh, repulsions, sinus flaps, those types of procedures. But um, with, with what we have now, we have other means that are much better. So what we did here is um, you can see where we actually put a screw into what was remaining of the tooth. And then we use a hammer to tap this out. And by pulling it out this way, we don't cause any trauma of going into the sinus and trip into the bone. It's just a small little incision. Uh, so that's a great technique that we occasionally use on, on some horses. So she should heal up really fast now that that side is out. And then we're gonna give her a few weeks to let one side recover. And then we'll go ahead and do the other side. Uh, we do everything with the horse standing put them on pain medications afterwards. Um, obviously, we give them really good sedatives during the procedure and we numb the tooth so there's never any pain. That's why they allow us to do the things that we're doing is they're not feeling anything. And for uh, people that don't necessarily know a lot about horses, it's better to do these procedures with a horse standing and awake versus on, under complete general anesthesia. There, there's just more um, chance of complication and so that's why you see them standing like this, but they're not in any pain and we give them really good post-operative pain management.